Nefton Reed has a lot to do with anchoring the inside. Dima Deacons 9-0 here at Lawrence Joel Veterans Memorial Coliseum. Virginia has lost its two road games in the ACC and they've been blown out in both. The Demon Deacons start with the ball at 11 and 4, 3 and 1 in the league. Virginia 11 and 4 and 2 and 2 in the league. And it is Wake Forest which will ride its starting five hard, getting the ball to Efton Reed on an early touch. Reed to the left hand, no, the offensive rebound and Andrew Carr's stick back will not go. And it's Jordan Miner making his first start as a Cavalier who cleans up the ball for Virginia. Welcome to Lawrence Joel Veterans Memorial Coliseum. Kevin Brown, Debbie Antonelli, Virginia and Wake Forest in a critical early ACC game and a missed jumper by Isaac McNeely gives the ball to the Demon Deacons. We're looking for their first NCAA tournament since 2017. And they've got one of the best starting fives in the ACC. Carr and Reed, the bigs. Miller, Hildreth, and Salas, three guards that all score between 17 and 18 points per game. This is Cameron Hildreth, 17 point per game scorer, missed a three. A rebound tipped down to Ryan Dunn for UVA. You're going against a low possession defense, a ball control offense in Virginia and a high-flying offensive attack of Wake Forest with those three players in the backcourt that you mentioned, Kevin. Unlike any team in the country right now, better than 17 points a game. Reese Beekman, not a great three-point shooter, rattles it out. The rebound tip to Efton Reed for Wake Forest. The tendency of a Tony Bennett coach team is no offensive rebounds, get back and force Wake Forest to play against their quarter-court defense. Hildreth somehow kept the pivot foot down. Here's Reed. The first year Demon Deacon in his third school, LSU Gonzaga, Wake Forest, and some good early defense by Jordan Miner, the grad transfer from Merrimack, making his first Virginia start. Leads to a leak out for Dunn, who missed the contested layup, and a foul against Virginia will send it the other way. It's a brand new starting five you see there for UVA. No Andrew Rohde off the bench for the first time this year. Jake Groves returns to the starting lineup at the four, and Jordan Miner, who played well really in, in garbage time against NC State last week had a good week of practice according to Tony Bennett so he makes his first start for Virginia as Tony Bennett's trying to find the right combination I mean here's the adjustment right away Virginia always doubles the block with minor on the floor after a week of practice based on what you said in the NC State game they're playing straight up inside Efton Reed is 0 for 2 going against minor on the interior 6 8 242 is the defensive player of the year the Northeast Conference last year Hunter Salas with a three, and it took nearly two and a half minutes, but this game finally has a bucket, and it comes from the best scorer on the floor at nearly 18 a game. It's a different offensive discipline than coming off the Florida State game, where they play up the line, they overplay every pass, they switch everything. You've got to have a different mentality offensively against the Virginia D. A spin move, Boopy Miller, who took it away from Miner and finished, and Wake's got the first five. Transfer guard from Central Michigan, Kevin Boopy Miller wearing zero in black and gold. Inside of Meyer, he is stuffed by both of Reed's hands. Back out for Groves, a good shooter who missed a two. Salas flies in for the rebound, and Virginia's 0 for 5. The Gonzaga transfer Hunter Salas. Carr can step out and shoot, take it into the body of Groves, and the foul goes against Jake Groves, his first. Boopy Miller on an uphill pass, overplaying, anticipates, and then look at this move. He's listed at six feet, I don't think so. But I'll tell you what, he's got incredible quickness, and here are the players that we were talking about. Nobody in the country has three players on the floor that can do what Wake Forest can do. And right now, Cameron Hildreth, his numbers and Boopy Miller's numbers are both up in ACC play through four games. Only Division I school with three players at 16.9 points per game or higher. UVA will counter Reed with Blake Buchanan, the freshman wearing zero and white. Here is Salas, well marked by Dunn. Got it to Hildreth at the end of the shot clock. And the rebound off the hands of Buchanan into the hands of Jake Groves. Guard your yard as what? Tony Bennett would tell you from his Wisconsin days and a derivative directly from his dad, Dick Bennett, 
who was a master of the pack line defense. Long two for Beekman, and Virginia is on the board after nearly four minutes. It's Reese Beekman there, leading scorer at nearly 13 per game. And then Beekman, who's one of the best defenders in the country, almost took it away from Miller and commits a foul. The first on Beekman will send us to our first break. A couple of baskets early for Wake Forest at home. Sometimes the storylines is right themselves. Virginia, the second best scoring defense in the country. Now they play at a slow pace, but 14th in the country in field goal percentage defense, too. Wake Forest tied for third overall in the ACC in scoring offense in ACC games. They've scored at least 82 points every time. Steve Forbes' team in his fourth season at Wake Forest looking to get back to the tournament for the first time since 2017. And they lost their last game, Deb, with a 3-0 start. First time since 2009 they've done that in ACC play. They lost three of their first five games. Then they win, went on and won nine in a row until they lost to Florida State in the last one. That's a good ATO by Coach Forbes coming off the timeout. And those first five games, they didn't have that guy, Efton yes. Reed, who was waiting for his two-time transfer waiver to be applied, the feed from Hildreth. And Reed's on the board for the first time. So they've gone seven and one with Efton Reed in the lineup. I think he changes a lot of things about the way they space the floor. He's a rim protector, which gives him a three-level defense. You've got ball pressure, you got rotation, and you got the ability to block shots. Freshman Buchanan just grazes the rim. And here is Hunter Salas. Really become transfer you, Wake Forest. So many impact players. Four of their five starters are transfers and from some Big programs, a couple of former Gonzaga Bulldogs. Here's one of them in Salas, fronted by Beekman. Boopy Miller, back for Salas in the lane. A contested shot will roll home. And an early five for Hunter Salas. That's just passing the ball back and forth in the middle third. And then when you're late on a closeout or you take the wrong angle, the quickness of Boopy Miller can get in the gap. Beekman trying to break down Miller. We'll get it back from Blake Buchanan. Andrew Rohde's on the floor for the first time for UVA, the St. Thomas transfer. Dunn stepping out. Carr rejected in a major wave and a foul call as Reed spiked that ball out of the air, but Jamie Lucky's got a foul. That's an incredible play by Virginia. It's roll and replace, and Dunn catches it at the top. Gets past Carr, but there's that third level, Kevin. That's what I'm talking about. You've got the eraser at the rim. Now he's going to pick up a foul, but he's letting Dunn know that he's going to be there all game. Talked to Steve Forbes before the game. He said Efton Reed is such a high-level communicator, and you could tell a shooter out that there are a few high-level communicators on this team. I think everyone in the starting five at some point had instruction for their teammates. Reed will take a seat right now with that first foul, but for a Wake Forest team that only plays about seven or eight, there are a lot of vocal leaders on this team. And Cameron Hildreth is one of them, and when Efton Reed goes to the bench, Andrew Carr goes to the five spot. This would be considered maybe their smaller lineup, even though Zach Keller comes off the bench at 6'10". <laughs> Keller with the ball right now, fumbled a low pass, and Dunn takes it away. Virginia's so good at forcing turnovers, one of the best teams in the country at that. Leads to a missed three by the Red Hot McNeely. According to Ken Palm, they're number 24 in the country, and 22% of your offense, they're going to turn you over. That's a high number. Carr dribbles out of the quick double. Pass deflected by Beekman. Out of bounds, it will go to Virginia. Welcome to the Joel Lawrence Joel Veterans Memorial Coliseum in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, where Wake Forest is looking to remain unbeaten at home. Kevin Brown, Debbie Antonelli, our ESPN2 crew. The Demon Deacons at this early juncture in conference play, the first team out of Joel Lenardi's projected bracket. Virginia is a little below them. Two teams that look like they may straddle the bubble line, and it is a big game early in conference play. Ryan Dunn for Virginia will not get the bounce, and UVA is one for nine to start.
Demon Deacons four out of nine. They're nine and zero in this building this year. Forty and five at the Joel the last three seasons. Cameron Hildreth finds an open Miller, a good shooter, who rattles it out. You got to move the ball side to side. You got to get a piece of the paint. You got to look to attack in the gaps against this pack line Virginia defense, one of the best in the country at shortening the game, shortening possessions. Second best scoring defense in the country, Virginia, but they cannot get anything going right now. Buchanan's miss makes it a one for 10 Wahoo start. Yet their defense keeps them in it yep. because Wake Forest has not been able to separate with their offense. Dunn deflects it from Carr. Rhodey's all over Carr, and Carr is the last to touch it. Another Wake Forest turnover. That's the Demon Deacons third. Year 15 for Tony Bennett, who is very happy with the week of practice his team had. They haven't played in a week since losing to North Carolina State on Saturday. Likes to use the analogy of a door knocker. Just keep knocking at the door, chipping away, hoping good things will happen. He made a lineup adjustment. If you're just joining us, Virginia started Jordan Miner for the first time this year, but took him out of the game after a few minutes with the freshman Blake Buchanan back on the floor. But Tony Bennett has won the National Coach of the Year three times, the ACC Coach of the Year four times, and a national championship. He's the master at tinkering and tweaking, and I think the way their defense is designed is to play the angles and uh, make it tough on the opponent. They can test everything. Wake Forest did to Virginia what Virginia does to so many others right there. A Leon Bonds nation to the men's basketball program this week. Provided the lead investment earlier for that $12 million Shaw basketball complex. A huge supporter of the Demon Deacons. A part owner of the Atlanta Hawks. A Wake Forest alum. Class of 91. This is an athletic department which has had a great couple of years the baseball team ranked number one college world series last year basketball team on the rise as salas hits his third shot three attempts coach forbes two for two on atos they have scored both once efton reed this time a three by salas meanwhile virginia has not hit a field goal since the 1604 mark closing in on five minutes with that one UBA shooting at one for ten. Here's Groves, the Oklahoma transfer, too strong. Good wall up at the rim by Zach Keller. Keller and Parker Fredrickson, the first two off the bench for Wake Forest. And here is Fredrickson, who is absolutely deadly from three, number 20 in black and gold. Hildreth tries to wrap it inside to Carr, and another turnover. That's the fourth for Wake Forest. And then Carr commits a foul on the freshman Leon Bond the third. That's Wake Forest had some big turnover issues Tuesday at Florida State with 24 early here. Yeah, four in the last four minutes. Steve Forbes said at times at, in the game on Tuesday, I don't know what team that was. And that is what Virginia does. They turn teams over at such a high rate. Beekman's got the only made field goal for Virginia. He's got the much bigger car on him, spinning, trying to create space. Beekman's shot is flat, rebounded by Keller. Salas with an early eight, penetrating. Salas keeps the dribble alive, and he stepped out of bounds. Beekman doing a great job of moving his feet. Remember number two in white, the ACC Defensive Player of the Year last year for Virginia. He's taken over the point guard responsibilities after T. Hank Clark had been there for about 15 years. And so there requires a different mentality when you move off the ball to playing on the ball. And you take a look at the highlights for Reese Beekman. He has been outstanding. Defensively, he has gotten better and his assist turnover and his decision making has gotten better. I, I was surprised. I thought it was only 14 years for T. A. Clark <laughs> in Charlottesville. It, it is still unusual to not see him in a Cavaliers uniform. They really like what they've gotten out of Beekman. He's the only returning starter, though, from last year's 25 and 8 co ACC regular season champion. That shot's missed by Bond. Here's Boopy Miller after a spell. Rhodey holds his ground well. McNeely's got another steal. And Virginia is one for 13, four points in 10 minutes, and yet their defense yes. is letting them hang around. And that does not help. 
Speakman throws it right to the arms of Fredrickson. Well, again, Wake Forest hasn't been able to separate. And you look at the numbers, it's just a three possession game for Virginia. That's the way they look at it. They don't look at it as eight points. They count possessions. Six turnovers in the last five and a half minutes. That shot missed by Salas and grabbed by the redshirt freshman Bond. What does Virginia need to do better on this side? I mean, they got to keep moving the ball because they have been able to get to the rim. They got to finish, like right there. Got to make a good play, good decision, and has a good roll to the bucket. Minor in from Rody in the first field goal in nearly seven minutes for Virginia. Rody comes off that screen, he snakes it a little bit, and he holds his ground and allows Minor to shape up. It's a nice, patient look and delivery. Efton Reed wants it inside against Minor. Back on the floor after an early foul. Right now, Wake Forest has got to get a piece of the paint. You got to get in the gap. You got to attack inside out against this defense. Look at the way Beatman hounds Miller, and Wake Forest will turn it over again. Miller called for an offensive foul with the ward off against Reese Beekman. They want you to play off the bounce. You're trying to take Beekman undersized down to the block. You got to make a better decision than that. And a couple times, Boopy Miller's playing a little too fast. If you're a young basketball player watching this game, isn't there so much you can learn from watching Reese Beekman defend? First of all, he's going to get in a stance. He understands personnel. And it's a, as Tony Bennett would say, it's a we and us versus the ball. Constantly guarding the ball. They're in help position. They protect inside out. They're really connected on that end. Virginia's got Tane Murray on the floor, the junior from Auckland, New Zealand. UVA bench had just eight points in the loss to NC State a week ago. They got a couple of points here. A redshirt freshman Bond who had not scored over his last three games. And Virginia's down within four. Losing in on a four-minute scoring drought now for Wake Forest. Reed looking for a touch against Miner. And a foul off the ball against Jordan Miner. This is his first. See, that's where Cameron Hildreth makes a smart play because Efton Reed is trying to shape up. And when you make that next pass to the wing, you give Efton Reed an opportunity to show his number and his hands to the ball and draw that foul. Hildreth off the inbound. You know, the situational offense for Steve Forbes is the difference in the game. They're ATOs, they're baseline out of bounds. Yeah. Half their baskets have come on those plays. Snaps a scoring drought of about four minutes for Wake Forest. Off a hard screen, McNeely gets free, and Virginia's best shooter strokes a two. Isaac McNeely, you want to talk about a clinic and working off pin downs. He does a nice job of getting his feet under him and into the rhythm of the shot. McNeely at 12 points a game, their second leading scorer. Miller chucks it on the rim, and Bond's got the rebound. Yeah, Good early minutes for the freshman. I'm sorry, Kevin, I don't understand what Boopy Miller's doing there. I mean, that's twice he's tried to invert to the block against Reese Beekman. Rody around Fredrickson, and Reed takes it out of the air on the way down. A goal 10 on the illegal way down. The shot from Andrew Rody, and it sure was. Yeah, no question about that. And, you know, for UVA, they've got six different guys that have made a basket so far to give them 12 points. One for 13 to start the game. Most teams, you go one for 13 to start the game, and your head coach has probably called yeah. a timeout. You're down 12 points. Virginia has forced seven turnovers, and they've hung in there defensively, as they so often do, as Cam Hildreth breaks a three. He's only hit one basket for Wake Forest. Well, that's part of the, the problem for Wake Forest is seven turnovers. Virginia's taken more shots. Yeah. And when you're struggling and you've made four of your, you've made your last four baskets, so now you're on a hot streak, right? Can Wake Forest defense get a stop right here? Beekman back out for Miner. Grab transfer from Merrimack, spins into Reed, got to the right hand, left it short. Offensive rebound kept alive by Bond, and then Miner will float it around and out. Two misses for him. Wake Forest right now led by Hunter Salas with eight. Salas is out of the game. He's the only player who scored in the game that has more than two points. 
ESPN today. Three more games highlight our schedule. The next one on ESPN, Arkansas and Florida, two teams that are surprisingly 0-2 in the SEC despite some high hopes. That game streaming live on the ESPN app. Houston TCU, Cincinnati Baylor to follow. Kind of surprised to see that Razorbacks and Gators, two proud programs who have gotten off difficult starts in conference play. And Tony Bennett has to take Reese Beekman out because he picked up that second foul. Trying to guard Cameron Hildreth in transition. So now Isaac McNeely will handle the ball a little bit more. So will Dunn for Virginia. The two fouls at the 6-18 mark. We'll see how long Tony Bennett rolls without Beekman, but without him. He's tied the game. Andrew Rhodes, the first Cavalier with two made field goals. I mean, this is all Virginia pace. They got Wake Forest, the highest scoring team in ACC play, walking the ball up the court. There's a foul on Rhodey, who chucked a cutting Hildreth. First foul on a St. Thomas transfer. You know, when you get to conference play, Kevin, it's who you play when and where. And for Steve Forbes, they're coming off of that Florida State loss. Florida State's an up the line, switch everything, tilt the floor, play fast, force you to make decisions at every turn. And Virginia is the opposite. They're playing in the gaps, they're slowing you down, they're shortening the possessions. They're really making you execute in the quarter court. Reed. Seven to shoot for Carr, another long possession for Wake Forest. Miller's got done, who's an excellent defender. It's the hand up as Miller fires a three in his face and sticks it. Late clock, big triple to give Boopy a little confidence right here because I don't think his decision making has been very good to this point. A little miscommunication there between Dunn and Groves leads to a Virginia turnover. The Cavaliers fourth. Ryan Dunn at 6'8", caught on a switch. And Boopy uses the bounce to create some separation. 48 points the last two games for Boopy Miller, the first year Deke from Central Michigan. He's got Isaac McNeely on him now. Hildreth spinning around on Rhodey. Hildreth off the iron, but a tough start for him, just one for five. Coming off of 25 points, a game high in the loss to Florida State. Coming into today, he leads the ACC in scoring at 20 points a game in conference play. Minor from Rhodey. A couple of Demon Deacons were there to contest it. We'll see who the foul is on. It's going to be charged to Hildreth, his first. I'll tell you what, Jordan Minor must have had a heck of a week of practice because Virginia hasn't played since the NC State loss. And when you go to practice at Virginia, there's a Great purpose and great intent. So you earn your minutes in practice with Tony Bennett. Well, he's already played more minutes in this first half than he averages on the season. His season average is 7.1. There are the numbers. He had a great season last year at Merrimack. 17 and a half points, nine and a half rebounds, 2.6 blocks per game. He was the Code Northeast Conference Player of the Year. Folks don't remember the way Merrimack season ended because even though they won the NEC tournament, they were not eligible. Right. They haven't yet been in Division One for enough time to make the transition to become postseason eligible. Which is so a ridiculous rule. Ridiculous. And, of course, that meant the second-place team got the NCAA tournament spot. That team was fairly Dickinson, who would go on to upset Purdue in a 116 game. Inside Miller throws it for Reed. Extra fine Salas. Good luck for three. What was that? Three sides? Four sides? Reverse the ball against the pack line. Get the ball to the paint, then spray it to a three-point shooter. Excellent possession by Wake. After a two-point first half against Florida State, Salas has 11. He's on the ball against McNeely. Spinning around on Salas. McNeely created space but couldn't finish. Miner goes over the back and knocks it out of bounds. Hunter Salas outscoring the rest of his teammates combined early. You reverse, you skip, you dump it inside, and you turn down a good shot for a great one. Salas buries a trip. Sean makes a great point. I mean, Salas played 17 minutes a game last year for the Zags, so he has definitely been a really improved guy and has certainly 
thrived in Steve Forbes' system. Three for four so far, and he's got 11 points. He's one of those three guys in the backcourt for Wake Forest, averaging better than 17 points a game. Nobody in D1 has that. And this time, Salas is the distributor, setting up his former Gonzaga teammate, Reed. Once again, Forbes dialing it up after a timeout, getting the shot he wants, not the shot that he wants Boopy to think about. There's a bad miss by McNeely. And here's Hildreth for Wake Forest, which has assisted seven of its nine baskets. They're only 313th in the country in assist rate. They typically get a lot of scores in isolation, but Hildreth has the assist for Carr here. And Wake Forest has quickly stretched the lead to 10. Keeping an eye on Efton Reed. He was limping a little bit going back down the floor. They run a nice clear out for Carr, who is a capable three-point shooter. And Reed hangs back as McNeely has space for a second basket. Snaps an 8-0 Wake Forest run. Hildreth inside for Reed. Had space on Groves. Reed's lost his dribble. Somebody needs to bail him out quickly. And he couldn't quite get it to Carr. Beekman back on the floor, and he's undercut. Andrew Carr's second foul and Wake Forest's fifth. Tomorrow it's a terrific women's college basketball triple header starting at 1 Eastern on ESPN. Great game of the ACC, Virginia Tech and Florida State. Two ranked teams defending national champion LSU and Angel Reese head to Auburn and then Tennessee, Texas A&M. It all begins at 1 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. Florida State coming off a huge win against North Carolina. And Multimania and LSU, the road show in Auburn. It's like a circus, but it's a fun one. It's got three tops, too. That's it, only three? <laughs> I don't know, there might be a few more. <laughs> That's the second foul against Reed. So with a minute 50 to go in the half, both Carr and Reed have two fouls. And Steve Forbes shows you what he thinks of that with a head shake. Jordan Miner split a pair of free throws earlier. I mean, Jordan Miner has been terrific here in the first half. They started out the game, as we know, Virginia loves to double the block. Well, Tony Bennett let Miner play Efton Reed straight up. We haven't seen the double come to the block. I mean, they ran the double team against NC State and DJ Burns all the way out to the three-point line. We are not seeing that today. Miner splits a pair again. He'll take his seat. Don't want to get him. An extra foul trouble in the final minute 50. Leon Bond is on, so it's a pretty small Virginia lineup right now. Dunn at 6'8 is the biggest man on the floor for Virginia. Bond at 6'5 guards the 6'10 Keller. Miller, Beekman just hounding. Gets back into position. Hildreth across the way. Beekman's there for the rebound with 90 seconds to go. So solid, Virginia. Brody, bomb from Dunn, charging into Keller. A lot of folks on the Wake Forest bench think Keller went straight up. The officiating crew of AJ decide Jamel Spearman and Jamie Lucky does not. Free throws coming for Bond. I mean, Keller has had a couple of plays where he's walled up on the inside. Let's watch right here. Is that offense initiated contact? Because that's what Steve Forbes is saying. But Virginia, not a good free throw shooting team. 330th in the country in free throw percentage and a couple of misses for Leon Bond there. They're four for eight today. Here's Carr. Good defense by Dunn. Back out for Miller, closing in on a minute in the first half. And a foul out high against Bond. That's the sixth against Virginia. Bond's first. You know Virginia's going to hedge on all ball screen action. And you got to go right at that outside hip. And that's exactly what Boopy Miller does. A score line and a pace that's been played at Virginia's level. Well, the Demon Deacons leading by seven in the final minute of the half. Hildreth 
Well defended by McNeely. Not a great one-on-one -on -one defending for Virginia today. And a takeaway there. Ryan Dunn flies in for the steal. Second steal of the game for Dunn, who is averaging two per game on the year. Fifth Nine. most in the ACC. Nine first-half turnovers, Kevin, for Wake. Eatman got a screen from Dunn and drains the three. And a timeout taken with 31.3 to go in the half. A 30-second timeout with Virginia. I got the Eagles picking it back up. You do? Yes. I have the Bucks because the Bucks, despite a mediocre season, can't be worse than the Cardinals or the Giants who just beat the Eagles the last two weeks, can they? I don't know. I just, I think they're going to put it back together again. You have faith. I do. You think Humpty Dumpty's going to, you know, <laughs> have the pieces be re-glued? We'll see. Monday night, two games on Monday, by the way. The Bill Steelers game was just postponed to Monday because of the awful weather in Buffalo. So last possession of the half for Wake Forest. Salas flips it into Carr, the catch and the finish for Andrew Carr. They scored three times on that set off the timeout. Here's Dunn, that's good if it goes, and it does not. So a little 6-0 spurt by Virginia. Carr gets the last bucket. Wake Forest did assist on nine. Low scoring half of the season, and yet the Demon Deacons lead by six at home, 27-21 over the Virginia Cavaliers. Kevin Brown, Debbie Antonelli, our ESPN crew, as we begin the second half from Lawrence Joel Veterans Memorial Coliseum. It was the first half that was played at Virginia's pace, typically. Tony Bennett and his pack line defense have been terrific, but Wake Forest, which wins a lot of games with its offense has been up to the task defensively well, wake forest turned the ball over nine times they didn't shoot any free throws they shot 45 percent from the floor and this is virginia's pace it's a bend don't break defense and they survived a, a poor shooting start one for 13 to start the game and here they are in a two possession game Cavaliers, according to Joe Lenardi right now, the 10th team out of the field. Wake Forest the first. And yes, it's early, but every game is measured equally in terms of what had happened in the committee's eyes. So this is going to be a quad one win for Virginia or a quad two home win for Wake Forest. Wake Forest led in the first half by Hunter Salas, 11 of the Demon Deacons, 27. He's got three threes, one off a season high. This is Boopy Miller who got to the left hand on Reese Beekman, creating some contact and scoring. That's a tough two right there. And Beekman with those two fouls has to be careful. He did play 15 minutes in the first half. Virginia in the first half, led by Beekman with five, one of six different scores between two and five points. And he breaks a jumper there. A couple of misses for Beekman to start the second. Whoopi Miller's got seven for Wake Forest. All 29 points from the starting five for the Deeks. Cameron Hildreth for Wake Forest, one for seven in the first half. I'm looking for him to get going here in the second. If they're going to get to the free throw line. He's going to be the guy. Yeah, there's the third foul on Beekman, a minute 17 into the half. You say get to the free throw line. Wake Forest has not done that. Virginia's committed eight fouls, none shooting. And Beekman's going to get a... A little breather here after that third foul. Tony Bennett with a quick hook to start the half. I think you have to because Steve Forbes right here with the offense in front of him. You know he's going to pick on Beekman. He'd run something right at him. Tay Murray's in the game and there's Carr stuffing it right through Dunn. One of the things that Efton Reed does is gets Andrew Carr to his natural position, which is the four. He is a face-up player. He's a good decision maker. He's not just a stretch four. He's a hybrid guy who can make decisions. That's an offensive foul. Andrew Rohde with a left-handed ward off picks up his second. I mean, another baseline out-of-bounds play in perfect execution by the Deeks. And now Ryan Dunn's going to come out of the game for Leon Bond. So no Dunn and no Beekman, not even two minutes into the first half for UVA. Cavaliers arguably two best players this year. Salas can't convert on the layup. I mean, it's a good take. It's a hard roll to the rim by Reed, and then you follow with the penetration right behind the roll. He had a great look. Jordan Miner inside. Reed was there to alter the shot. Reed with a couple of fouls, walled up defensively. First four and a half belong to Wake Forest. 
Demon Deacons trying to get to 10 and 0 at home for the third straight year. Miller fouled by McNeely. That's three in two minutes and 19 seconds against UVA. McNeely's first. I don't know what Steve Forbes said to Jamie Lucky at a long conversation before heading to the locker room, but whatever he said appears to have sprinkled some magic <laughs> pixie dust on this game. Even against the pack line, Kevin, if you reverse the ball and you move it, you will have a late closeout that you can attack, and that's what Wake Forest has done here in the first, second half. Miller, there's another foul, and he'll get the continuation. That's what I'm talking about. And Boopy Miller's first step is electric. I mean, he can go off the bounce, he can get to the gap, and he plays underneath guys. Right here, watch. He draws a foul, keeps his eyes on the rim. He even plays through that help off the strong side because Cameron Hildreth was open in the corner if he decided to kick it. Kevin Miller is named Boopy for his uncle. Passed away when he was young. He inherited the name. A three-point play there. And this is the largest lead for Wake Forest, which has all seven points in the second half. First time extended pressure because the first time Wake Forest is at the free throw line. They're 100% in the game. Rody off the glass and good. Andrew Rody's three for three. Rody's good on that snake behind the screen. He's very good with his size at using the glass. 17 point per game score at St. Thomas, Minnesota a year ago. He's got six. Carr somehow kept the right foot down, flanked it, rebound to Tane Murray. Virginia, two road losses in two road games in the ACC. 22 at Notre Dame, 16 at NC State. Can they keep this game from unraveling? McNeely. Just two for seven tonight for the red hot shooter, Isaac McNeely. Salas, a step back. Got it. I mean, that time great. the season high is 4 3. I mean, great patience. Well, a few weeks ago, Wake Forest did not look like an NCAA tournament team, but in part because of the addition of Efton Reed, they have charged up the list. Joe Lenardi, as of January 13th, has them the first team out of the projected field. And even though we're so far away from Selection Sunday, this just gives you an idea where things stand right now. Virginia's in the considered line. That's not next four out. That's not first four out. They're the 10th team out. UVA needs some wins. Tony Bennett's team is in danger of falling to 0-3 on the road in conference play. Lake Far is starting off the second half on a 10-2 run, and Reese Beekman back on the floor for Virginia. You know, Kevin, you really can't minimize the Efton oh. Reed effect. His ability to block shots at the rim. He moves Carr to the four, makes the perimeter extend a little bit more. And he's a great communicator on the backside of their defense. Got a block shot and a rebound on that position. A missed three by Rody. I mean, he changes the space on the floor offensively because he posts so hard. Here's Reed finding Salas. Reed tips it out for Miller. He's impacting the game everywhere. Miller missed a long one, and this is chased down by McNeely. McNeely does have the green light for a quick trigger if he's open in transition. Here's Beekman playing with the three fouls. Couldn't finish, but he draws the foul on Carr. It's a good coaching decision. Uh, Tony Bennett has to get Reese Beekman back on the court right now. And watch Efton Reed get off the contact, block it into their trans. Forbes has turned Wake Forest, this elite academic institution, into transfer you. Alondis Williams, the ACC Player of the Year two years ago. Tyree Appleby, the Associated Press, ACC Player of the Year last year. Hunter Salas, Boopy Miller certainly look like all ACC players, maybe first teamers, depending on the way this season goes. You add Efton Reed to the mix, who's playing in his ninth game after a two time transfer waiver. What is it about Steve Forbes, Deb? What is it about this program that makes it such a haven for transfers? Well, I think Steve Forbes understands how to put a team together. I mean, he's done it his whole career from his days at Southwestern Community College to Barton Community College to Northwest Florida State to East Tennessee State. 
I mean, those are the places that he was before Wake Forest, so he understood how to build when you had a lot of turnover back then when you're coaching community college in JUCO. I think that's part of his success. It's a great formula for him, and, and obviously he loves some good guards because he's had some great ones. I mean, we were told Alondis Williams dropped 55 the other night in a G League game. I mean, come on, 55 points. In any league, it's ridiculous. The team up by 12, looking to get to 4-1 and one in ACC play. Salas, one of those transfers, leading with 14. Here's Hildreth, and it's not been his night shooting-wise, but Salas is there for the offensive rebound. Miller, Reed stepping out, and stroking a three! Just his second of the year! Two for 11 on the season. He looked pretty good shooting that. He sure did, he didn't look like a two for 11-er. That ball deflected by Salas, who throws it ahead. Miller somehow snatches it from Big Man, and a three won't go from Carr. That would have been a real lid lifter. Beekman switched up with Carr. Reed over to help. Beekman loses it. Bond gets it. Starting to feel a little like that NC State game a week ago where Virginia lost control and lost quickly in the second half. Jumper from Bond is good. And one of the things NC State did in the second half is they were able to get out in transition. They rebounded well. They hit shots quickly. And then they played through DJ Burns. And Virginia was double teaming DJ Burns. They have not done that this afternoon. Reed. Here comes a double to Reed that time. Hildreth sets his feet and finally hits from three. And Wake Forest spent a lot of time this morning in shoot around working on that very set. Play through the double, skip it over the top. Groves answers right in front of his bench. Jake Groves with his first basket. That's the second made three-pointer you see for Virginia. Wake Forest, eight for 17. It's the UVA team that's got the fourth best three-point D in the ACC at 29.9%. Salas leans in and rolls it home. He's got 16. I mean, all you need is two hard dribbles in the quarter court. Excellent play by Salas. 27 points in the first 20 minutes for Wake, 18 in the first seven minutes of the second half. Salas doing a really good job of closing the space on McNeely. Bond, space to operate again. Hildreth has the rebound. Wake is plus seven on the boards. Push and transition, don't have anything. Boopy Miller's got to run something here. Hildreth, same spot. Different result. Beekman, Groves leaped out. Hildreth trying to chase him down. He does! A stop by Hildreth! A little English elevation. Elite conditioning, motor, will, and flat out joy. How can you not enjoy watching Cameron Hildreth? That is a great chase down and a big time play that got everybody off their feet, on their feet. Wow. 6'4, 195 out of Worthing, England. He can do a little bit of everything, Cameron Hildreth. He is the only non transfer in the starting lineup for Steve Forbes. And he is an all-league type player in his third year. Well, a little overzealous there, though. And Steve Forbes says, come on, Cam. Cam gets, he gets excited, right? <laughs> I'm telling you, it's an elite-level motor. That kid wants to win. Steve Forbes is going to take him out. Parker Fredrickson will replace Hildreth. Lake Fires doesn't have a point off the bench and still he's by 15. Ryan Dunn, quiet offensive day for him. Bond, Reed spikes it out of bounds with eight to shoot. 
Wake Forest is blocking shots. Wake Forest is hitting threes. Wake Forest is threatening to run away with this thing. Games. Last night, the Virginia Cavaliers, 72-58 victory over Wake Forest. That's Christian, Jaden, Isaac, Isaiah, Marcus, and Joe, my two guys that were over 20 points. And then for Wake Forest, it's John, Nate, Kai, Tyler, Zach, Sam, Noah, and Josh with a big game, scoring his first career points in a manager game with a couple of triples. Mm. The guys have a lot of fun doing that. They play late night in here. and. All coaches will tell you they can't survive without their managers. They provide so much support and stability to programs around the country. We were told Virginia's managers did have a little pack line defense thrown in there as well, by the way. <laughs> They're well-schooled. Mimic their uh, mm -hmm. head coach's philosophies respectfully. And Wake Forest uh, shot a lot of threes. It's great to see uh, the guys having fun because uh, they spend a lot of time helping the players become better. If somebody's getting up a 1,000 shots a day, you hear these stories of players getting to the gym at 5 in the morning. They're not by themselves. They're working out with the manager. And those are the unsung heroes, the glue that makes a college basketball program really tick. Lead is 15 for Wake here. The foul was Jake Grove second a moment ago for UVA. Boopy Miller in the lane. And that's tracked down by Zach Keller. Fresh 20 for the Demon Deacons, who've been very good on the glass. Throw it into Reed. Working on Groves. Reed has a big weight advantage on him, and Reed gets to his right hand. He's four for six for nine points. He's had a couple of dunks, so that's a big time post move right there, playing against single coverage. Steve Forbes thinks he's got a chance to play in the NBA. Efton Reed, ninth game here. Bond way off the mark. Cleaned up by Grove. Shot clock didn't reset. And Beekman hits his second three. I think Reese Beekman is one of the best right side of the box score players in the ACC. He's going to get you steals, assists. He understands personnel. He's got to be a threat more offensively. Call his number a little bit more right now. Ten points, four assists on a quieter day for him. Salas inside. Done! Somehow, some way, just with a swim move in the off hands. Beautiful footwork. 18 for Salas, six shy of a career high. Bond has been unafraid to shoot in this half. Just two for seven, rebound cleared by Reed. You know, Wake Forest has had a size advantage all game, but really hadn't taken advantage of it until this second half. And the Demon Deacons turned it over for the second time this half. One week from today, an ACC Network triple header. Struggling Clemson team trying to get right this week. They got BC today. They'll go to Miami next Saturday. Cavaliers are on the road in Atlanta against Georgia Tech. And then Pitt Duke at Cameron Indoor. ACC Network streaming on the ESPN app as well. Big game tonight, 7 o'clock. Miami, Virginia Tech. Two more bubble teams, as these two are. There's Dunn, who gets to the left hand. It's his first field goal. Sean Padula, the point guard for Virginia Tech, coming off a career high. Tyler Nickel, a career high off the bench. Joe Lenardi's only got three ACC teams in the field right now. Duke, Carolina, Clemson. There are about five more that you figure are a couple of wins away. These two, Virginia Tech has a pretty good net ranking now. Miami. It's the Final Four team a year ago, certainly in the mix. But NC State in that NC mix State right now. Absolutely. They're four and one in the league. Here's the ACC in the net rankings. North Carolina destroyed Syracuse today. They're the only undefeated team in conference play. And these two teams are, again, it's early, but they're right around the bubble. Virginia a little bit harder non-conference schedule, but their average margin of defeat, UVA, and around 20 points. That's not going to help your efficiency rankings when you lose by that much. Minor on the drop off from Beekman. A lot of traffic in there. It's poked away from Carr. Keller's on the deck. Groves gets it to Dunn. Out to Beekman. And that would have been a big one. Could have cut the lead to 11. Instead, it's 14. And Keller is fouled.
Jordan Miner is second. Wake Forest starting to pull away on the glass. Right now, plus nine in the rebounding margin. It is not a great rebounding team. Wake Forest are 11th in the ACC in rebound margin, but Virginia is the worst rebounding team in the ACC. Wake Forest a much bigger team. Carr bumping and banging with Groves. That's a third on Groves, and now a one and one coming up for Andrew Carr. The refs have pretty much been instructed. One bump, good. Second bump, if it's displacement, you gotta put a whistle on it. That's coming straight from the NCAA. Groves is going to take a seat for McNeely. And Andrew Carr to the line. A nice bounce back afternoon for him with seven points and eight rebounds. Andrew Carr. This is the front end of the one and one. This is the second free throw attempt for Wake Forest today. And they, by the way, are the third best free throw shooting team in the country, nearly 80%. I mean, that nearly no. Tremendous acceleration off that stagger. When he gets a great look, he's just got to knock that down. It's two for nine That's today. That's a shot he can make. And he was making them the last couple of games. Been really good in conference play. Fredrickson, the first bench points of the afternoon for Wake Forest from their three point marksman. Largest lead for Wake Forest on a Parker Fredrickson three. And everything's coming up, Demon Deacons, on this Saturday afternoon. All right, gentlemen, some Big 12 basketball coming up after this ACC game, which has been dominated by Wake Forest. The three-headed monster of Salas, Miller, and Reed outscoring the nine-headed monster that's been Virginia today. And that field goal number was before that last shot. Make it 13 for 46. UVA shooting at 28%. And Wake Forest has stretched a six-point halftime lead to 17. And just a reminder, the ACC is 9-3 and three against the Big 12 mm. this year. Here's Miner. Score it, plus a foul for Jordan Miner. Season high, 18 minutes for him. He's up to a season high, tying six points. Miner doing a great job through contact, finishing, getting to the free throw line. This is what Virginia needs. Easy buckets, clock stopped, get to the line. Two for about, four there today. Sorry, Kevin, it's all about the quarter court D for, for Virginia. They don't like to extend. So season high seven. Jordan Miner, somebody who earned himself his first start today. He's probably earning himself more and more minutes for Tony Bennett with yeah, this performance. I would think so. Uh, I mean, he's he's got a physical frame and a presence on the front line that they need. There's Carr. Little shimmy, little shake, little score. Overdone. It was anything but for Andrew Carr. I'm a little surprised that Ryan Dunn hasn't inserted himself a little bit more in this game. He's only taken three shots. I think he's going to be a guy that's got tremendous upside. He's going to have to be more aggressive in their offense. They had a season high 16 their last time out. They had 15 in the game before that, Ryan Dunn. That's the third foul on Boopy Miller. Lake Far is sixth. Ryan Dunn would be considered one of the most improved guys in the ACC. We saw a couple the other night. And three points, three rebounds last year for Ryan. 13 minutes, but everything's doubled now because his production has doubled due to his, doubled his minutes as well. Tony Bennett takes his third time out. Again, the wins and losses this season, you know, Anytime you put statistics in wins or statistics and losses together, it's going to be dramatic. It's usually not this dramatic. When Virginia wins, it's not close. When they lose, 
It's not close either. Their loss is 24 to Wisconsin on a neutral court, 23 at Memphis, 22 at Notre Dame, 16 at North Carolina State. And Tony Bennett's team has always been a team that is at their best when they get ahead and kind of strangle you defensively, and they have a tougher time coming back because of the pace of play. Right. This has been one of, statistically, one of his worst offensive teams at Virginia. As Beekman can't convert, they're shooting under 30% today. Now, I wouldn't call it their shot selection either. I think they have had some good looks, but maybe we're understating the Wake Forest defense and their length. Mm -hmm. you know, their size on the front line, and Efton Reed's development inside, even though he turns it over right here again. It's Miner playing him straight up, which is exactly the way Tony Bennett started the game in the post. And this is not a traditional Tony Bennett team. They were 25 and 8 a year ago, but nine newcomers. They lost their whole front court to the transfer portal, notably Caden Shedrick to Texas. They only returned three players that had semi regular playing time. And the guys they got in the transfer portal have not made the impact they hoped so far between Rhodey and Miner and Groves. Here's one of those players, Rhodey. Salas blocks his shot. Hunter Salas with major elevation. Beekman gets a piece of the paint. Rhodey got a pump fake maybe. Get Salas to fly by and then step by on that three-point line. Six block shots for Wake Forest today. It's a good shot blocking team. McNeely. Fouled by Hildreth near the end of the shot clock. Third foul, Cam Hildreth. McNeely will shoot two. This has been an unusual afternoon for Isaac McNeely, who has lit up the ACC this year. Four for seven threes each of the last two games, six against Syracuse. Today he is 0 for 2 from 3. He comes into the game fourth in the nation, 49.4% from deep. But Wake Forest has done a terrific job making his life uncomfortable. Well, I think you can give that credit to Cameron Hildreth. I mean, he's the guy that lock and trail off all that screening action and every change of pace, every acceleration by Isaac McNeely. Cam Hildreth is on his hip. Couple of free throws to lead back down to 14. Virginia's going to need some quick baskets, which they typically don't get in the next few minutes, to make this thing at all interesting down the stretch. Miller almost had it taken away by Beekman. Deep into the shot clock, Boopy Miller. Out to Carr, inside done. Miners there to defend. Carr steps back, missed it. A long possession, it ends with a rebound for McNeely, under five to play. Beekman into Miner. Reed straight up. Miner straight around him. A season high nine for him, and it's down to a dozen. Yeah, no quitting the Cavaliers, that's for sure. If they can get a stop right here in a bucket, three stops in a row, three baskets, they're right in it. Miller again. Beekman's been draped on his hip all afternoon. Hildreth. Tough shot. Hildreth. When they need a bucket. That's when Hildreth wants the ball. Back to 14, 420 to play. Beekman weaving his way. Good find by Rhodey and a three-pointer missed. Dunn spikes it off the floor to Carr. Miller. Miller's gonna take it himself. Little turbo boost and two at the rim. Thirty-second timeout taken by Steve Forbes with a big lead late at home. Arkansas, Florida, looking forward to that on ESPN, guys. And here on ESPN two, another big game for Hunter Salas, who had just ten points, four turnovers in the loss at Florida State Tuesday. This has been much more Salisian. Ryan Dunn only his fourth shot of the game, and Wake Forest has been awesome defensively. Virginia shooting it at 29% from the field. They've hit just three threes 
And the Demon Deacons are plus 11 on the glass. After only being up six points at the break, Steve Forbes' team came out and they put a punch on Virginia, their front line, especially Andrew Carr with 11 rebounds and Efton Reed protecting the rim. Carr with a second in the shot clock and Ryan Dunn with a rejection. Steve Forbes said after the loss on Tuesday against Florida State, look, usually the most aggressive team wins the game. He thought Florida State didn't necessarily play harder, but they were more aggressive. So how do you measure Wake Forest in terms of aggression today? I thought the second half there was definitely a, a sense of urgency about the way they played, especially on their back row. You know, Efton Reed's ability to alter and block shots around the rim and then in transition right here, Boopy's had a couple of times where he's been able to get out on the break. After I thought some poor decision making by Boopy Miller in the first half turned around here in the second. I like a point guard who can answer what I call the three W's, who to get the ball to, when and where, and I think Boopy Miller did a much better job in the second half. Through the foul against McNeely, Miller an 82% free throw shooter. Wake Forest, the best free throw shooting team of the country outside of Stetson and Villanova. They're third at 79.9%. And looks like they're going to win this game without very many attempts at all. This will be their fourth. You have to have closers that can finish off a game, especially in the backcourt. Last year, Wake Forest lost 10 games in league play. Nine of the 10 were by single digits. Five of those were by one possession games. You have to be able to understand situational offense. You've got to be able to take care of the basketball. You've got to be smart and finish games off. And making free throws is a part of it. Cam Hildreth with his fourth foul grabbing McNeely. Tony Bennett's team has a tough turnaround. They get Virginia Tech on Wednesday. Don't forget Arkansas, Florida coming up in just eight minutes in Gainesville. Two teams 0-2 in SEC play. A surprisingly slow start for Eric Musselman's Razorbacks. A lot of college hoops to come on ESPN after that. Houston TCU, the Cougars, the last undefeated team in the nation. Lost to Iowa State on Tuesday. Tough road game for them. And then Cincinnati, another Big 12 newcomer at Baylor. Following that at 8 o'clock. And a lot of upsets during college basketball this week. One, two, and three have all gone down. Purdue losing to Nebraska. Kansas lost at UCF, another new team in the Big 12. Andrew Carr is going to shoot three free throws here with 2.26 to go. Leon Bond committed the foul. One point for a double-double for Carr, and there it is. All right, so Wake Forest, ACC so far wins over Virginia Tech and Miami here. Boston College on the road. Here's what's coming up. It's not easy. Three of the next four on the road. North Carolina State was up to a really good start in conference play, also with one loss. And then that UNC team, which beat the... Stuffing out of Syracuse yeah. today, and they are the only unbeaten team in conference play. R.J. Davis, the headliner in the conversation for ACC Player of the Year right now. He's been fantastic and only getting better. I, I know we're only a couple of weeks in. Where do you think Wake Forest sits right now? Oh, come on. And where will they sit in the you ACC know, hierarchy? You, you've heard me before. I've talked about Wake a lot already this season about how I know they're going to impact the outcome of the race, and they're going to be right in the mix. And they don't have Damari Monsanto yet. Yeah, that's He's, a great point. He can come back sometime in January. We watched him practice today. He's starting to look pretty good. I mean, they're expecting him at the end of January. And that's another three-point threat, the best three-point shooter in terms of makes last season in the ACC. I think the upside for Wake is fantastic. I like their team a lot. And, uh, a lot of it had to do uh, with Efton Reed being able to be eligible like all the other two-time transfers across the country. There's Damari Monsanto, torn patella tendon at the end of last year. Not cleared for 
full court contact yet. Still getting the lower body back to strain. Steve Forbes told us he, he thinks he'll have Jao Ituka back soon as well as a 15 point per game score at Marist a couple of years ago. So a team that's not very deep might get quite a bit deeper by the end of the month. Here's the freshman Elijah Gertrude getting his first run for Virginia today. And that shot stroke from deep by Tane Murray. By the way, for Andrew Carr, after the three free throws, third double-double of his season. After three games in a row where he was in single digits. Final 90 seconds. Salas. Great crowd here at Wake Forest today, too. McNeely again, there's Reed. He's His fifth monster. block ties a career high. He's just a monster inside. Ow. I think Buchanan gets up that time. Efton Reed with five block shots. He's averaging 1.8 per game on the year coming in. That number's gonna spike. just does a terrific job of reading that penetration. Seven foot tall, 240, and does a great job of holding his ground on the inside. That's that three level defense I'm talking about. Great ball pressure, the ability to rotate on the second level, and then having that rim protection at the third level, which is what Efton Reed provides for Steve Forbes. Wake Forest up 16 in the final minute. Only one team has shot 50% or better against Virginia this year. That was Notre Dame. And Wake Forest is just under 50% with that last miss. 24 for 49. So they can get back to 50% with a make here. But either way, a really good second half offensively. Some good possessions, some long possessions. They find some baskets late in the shot clock, which you have to do against UVA. And Wake Forest is going to get to four and one in ACC play. Here's Salas. There's your icing. Why not a fifth three-pointer? A new season high for Hunter Salas. It's been an impressive second half by Wake. Buchanan's miss is rebounded by who else but Salas. Got to get the ball across half quarter. It's a backcourt violation. Wake Forest figures that out. They figured a lot out in this second half, winning 66-47 as the Demon Deacons blast the Cavaliers and get to 4-1 in ACC play. For the fourth consecutive year, Steve Forbes' team is 10-0.